ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for attending today's Memorial Day celebration and observance. To kick things off, I'd like to introduce the Amity Senior High Band, led by Phil Dolan. Thank you. Thank you, Amity Senior High Band. At this time, we will now have the flag raising by the Boy Scout Pack 922. At this time, we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance led by Anna Mae Piger, President of the American Legion Auxiliary. Anna Mae. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now the national anthem will be sung by Kaylee Fitzpatrick. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight over ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the
Thank you, Ms. Fitzpatrick. Thank you for joining us on this fine May Sunday. It is a pleasure to honor our fallen service members and especially those who are being honored here today. We would like to thank the Orange Foundation for donating the plaques for our veterans. And we would also like to take a moment to thank Bob Archibald from the Orange Foundation. The Orange Foundation Committee lost a stellar member in March. Bob served in the Air Force and has always helped our committee with the plaques for the honored veterans. We would like to extend our gratitude and sympathies to his family. Yeah. Uh, and this time, we'll now take a moment to introduce our dignitaries who are present with us today. First up, we have First Selectman Jim Zioli. U.S. Senator Richard Blumenthal. <laughs> Board of Selectmen Member Judy Williams, Board of Selectmen Member P.J. Shanley, and Board of Selectmen Member Mitch Goldblatt. <laughs> Representative Mary Wielander, and Representative Kathy Kennedy. Our Judge of Probate, Ben Gettinger. <laughs> Dr. Vince Scarpetti, Superintendent of Orange Public Schools. <laughs> Trisha Lasto, Principal of Peck Place Schools. <laughs> Our Town Clerk, Mary Shaw. Our Fire Chief, Vaughn Dumas. Charles Sherwood, our Deputy Fire Chief. Our Police Chief, Mr. Bob Gagney. And our Assistant Chief, Max Martins. And it is now my pleasure and honor to introduce our first selectman to say a few words, Mr. James M. Zioli. Thank you, Dominic. Nope. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. And thank you for taking time out of your day to recognize those that took time out of their lives so that we could all be here and enjoy today. I'd like to thank all of the departments, committees, armed forces that joined us today, all of our dignitaries and our committee that makes this event possible. They work on this all year long to make this day of remembrance possible for all of us. So thank you to the committee. Thank you all, really, truly. They deserve a round of applause. This is a day that we should never forget. This is a day that is very important for each and every one of us standing here. We need to remember to thank people. Don't be afraid to say hello to people and thank you to people for their service. It's it truly, they put everything on the line for us. And some made it home and some didn't. And we should never ever forget those sacrifices so that we can all enjoy today and every day of our long lives. Thank you and be safe for the day, be safe every day. At this time, we have a regular feature of our ceremony in which we honor three veterans from our community for their service and their service to our community as well. Our Grand Marshal this year is Lewis Merritt. <laughs> Mr. Merritt will be 
presented a plaque on behalf of the Memorial Day Committee as his Grand Marshal status is recognized. And we also have a certificate from Senator Blumenthal recognizing Mr. Merritt for his service. Thank you, Senator. Lewis Merritt, thank you. Well, I want to thank you all for this honor for me and for all of our veterans who have served our nation. Now, I served in 72 to 76 in the Naval Reserve and ended up uh, being in the company of many great individuals who make up our armed services. And for all those still serving today, I want to thank you for serving to protect our nation, our families, and our communities, all of us, in this time of great concern for our national safety as well as that of the world. For all those veterans who serve, I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Merritt. Our Chief of Staff this year is a gentleman who has served the town of Orange in several capacities. He has also served his country, specifically in the rank of captain. He served in the U.S. Air Force from 1978 to 1982. Thomas P. Hurley. Here to say a few words. I have one word. Why? Why did they do it? Why did they serve in this special service? And the answer, look around you. For without them, many of you would not be here today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hurley. He continues to serve the town of Orange as tax collector. Our honored veteran this year is Gregory LeBeau, First Sergeant, U.S. Army, 1990 to 2015. He served in Iraq, Operation Iraqi Freedom, 2004 to 2005, Afghanistan, Operation Enduring Freedom, 2009 to 2010, recipient of two Bronze Stars and the CIB Combat Infantry Badge. He's here accompanied by his wife, Anastasia, his daughter, Alexandria, and son, Gregory. Mr. LeBeau. Thank you, everyone. I just want to say that it's the greatest honor to be a representative of our nation's bravest and fallen heroes. Thank you. Those of you who are staying for the parade, keep an eye out for these individuals who will be uh, driven through the parade route, and you can thank them again. An essay is chosen from each school, each elementary school in the town of Orange, that captures the meaning behind the celebration of uh, Memorial Day. Olivia Burns is in the sixth grade at, at Mr. Spolensky's class at Turkey Hill School. Olivia? There you go. Have you ever wondered why we celebrate Memorial Day? Well, Memorial Day is celebrated because we must remember and honor all the women and men in the U.S. military who have passed while br bravely fighting for our country. The fact that they sacrificed their lives for freedom is truly humbling and fascinating. Memorial Day is celebrated on the last Monday of May, originally being celebrated on May 30th. Memorial Day used to be celebrated on May 30th because it was not the anniversary of any particular battle. 
as they soon changed the date to the last Monday of May to make it easier for people to celebrate the holiday and visit the cemeteries of memories that hold friends and loved ones. All in all, Memorial Day is celebrated to honor the men and women that passed while fighting for the U.S. The women and men who fought for our freedom will be ever, forever be remembered on this holiday. Uh, each of our readers today gets a gift certificate from Dip Top for $25. Our next reader is Juliet Anderson from Mrs. Martino's class, Racebrook School. Until recently, Memorial Day to me always meant an extra day off from school when my family opened our pool, an exciting time for my sister and me. It kicked off the season of my dad grilling, catching fireflies at dusk, and playing outside with my neighbors. Now, I realize Memorial Day means a lot more than that. Memorial Day is one of the two national U.S. holidays that recognizes people who were or are in the United States military services. Originally known as Decoration Day, Memorial Day honors all the men and women who died fighting for our country. The idea of Memorial Day originally started in the 1860s. Back then, during the springtime, people began honoring the soldiers that had died in the Civil War by decorating their graves with flowers. In 1868, John A. Logan, a former Civil War general, expanded the idea of honoring all the men and women who had died during the Civil War by suggesting there be an official day for them. He chose May 30th. The holiday was named Decoration Day. After World War I, the purpose of Decoration Day was extended to include all people who died fighting for the U.S. Decoration Day was not renamed to Memorial Day until after World War II. In 1967, Decoration Day became known as Memorial Day, although many still call it Decoration Day. The next year, the U.S. Congress set the date of Memorial Day for the last Monday in May. The same act made Memorial Day a federal holiday. Today, Memorial Day is celebrated with picnics, bar parades, and barbecues. But at the end of the day, Memorial Day observes all the men and women who gave up their lives to protect our country and defend our freedom. When we're opening our pool on Memorial Day, I'll take a moment to remember why we really celebrate it. Thank you, Juliet. Our third reader is Lena Goodrum from Peck Place School. Hello, my name is Lena, and today I'd like to talk to you about why we celebrate Memorial Day. Memorial Day is a U.S. holiday which honors the men and women who died while serving our country. But to me, it is also a day to thank these, <laughs> give me a moment, <laughs> to honor the men and women who died while serving our country. But to me, it is also a day to honor the military, both deceased and living, for everything that they have done for us. One thing that made me realize the importance of Memorial Day was when I went to Arlington Cemetery, where they honor military deaths. Before me and my family went, I learned that I had relatives who fought and ended up being buried there. While we were there, we were able to see their graves, one who was Alfred Stanley Chamberlain, who served in World War II. I also had the chance to see the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. The Tomb of the Unknown Soldier serves, serves as a symbolic grave for all those killed in war whose remains have not been found or identified. Their legacy lives on with this memorial that honors them with love and pride. At the tomb, each of the soldiers took 21 steps forward and backward never breaking the rhythm. The number 21 symbolizes the highest military honor that can be bestowed, the 21-gun salute. I was able to see this 21-gun salute at my great-grandfather's funeral, and it really impacted me. The officers who guard the tomb in Arlington Cemetery devote their time to honoring these unknown soldiers, people they never even knew. There is always a soldier guarding the tomb every hour of every day, no matter the weather. On the day that me and my family visited Arlington, it had started to pour. We left, but the guards stayed. Their loyalty inspires me to honor those who died for our country and to help serve the living in other ways, like donating to charities or sending care packages. So why do we celebrate Memorial Day? We celebrate Memorial Day because we want to cherish the memory of those who died and fought for America. We should honor these brave soldiers every day of our lives because they truly earned our respect. Thank you and happy Memorial Day. Thank you, Lena. Thank you to all our readers.
Now I'd like to ask each of you who is here, who was an honored veteran in past ceremonies, to stand up and remain standing. We encourage you to view the, and now please uh, sit down. Uh, we encourage you to view the Veterans Wall of Honor at High Plains Community Center around the other side of the building in the front. I'd like to call up Lewis Merritt, Commander of American Legion Post 127 for the General Orders. General orders for the parade are traditionally mentioned here, but first I want to thank all of you on behalf of the veterans here for coming out today and sharing this day with us as you, we remember those who have passed. After the parade, the uh, Veterans Hall will be open. We have an open house, food and drinks. Please stop by and uh, share with us your thoughts. With that, general orders for the parade are as follows. At the conclusion of these ceremonies, the dignitaries will, with a police escort, will proceed down Orange Center Road to the reviewing stands across from the town green. The parade will assemble in front of the High Plains Community Center in the two divisions, marching units in division one, motorized units will be in unit two. We will assemble at the entrance to the parking lot. The veterans present today are invited to join the American Legion at the head of the parade and march with us past the reviewing stands to the cemetery. Once the parade starts, we will march north on Orange Center Road, past the reviewing stands, rendering honors, and on to the cemetery. At the cemetery, marching units will turn into the parking lot behind Mario Tracy, along with floats and so forth, where they will dismount and cross the road to the cemetery. Motorized units will then continue on along Orange Center Road to their designated dispersal areas. Once the parade has completed, the American Legion will then continue with the ceremony at the cemetery, honoring all who have fallen. With that, we will then disperse to what we do and the rest of the day. Please visit us, visit us at the Legion Hall. We're open every Wednesday night for the community. Please come and visit us today. With that, I declare this service here at the gazebo. We've got one more oh, thing. my mistake. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Merritt. At this time, it is my distinct honor to call up our. Keynote speaker, Shane Molinari, Sergeant U.S. Marine Corps, 1979 to 1987. Ladies and gentlemen, honored veterans, families of the fallen, my fellow Sea Cadets, and distinguished guests. Today, on this Memorial Day, we gather not only to remember, but to celebrate the lives, the courage, and the lasting impact of the brave men and women that have served our great nation. We remember their laughter, their love, their dreams, and the contributions they made to our world. In this moment, we pay tribute to the fallen with profound gratitude. We honor those in the face and adversity that displayed extraordinary courage and unwavering commitment. They were more than soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines. They were our loved ones and community members. Their stories of courage and dedication still inspire us today. In the same spirit, we extend our heartfelt gratitude to those who currently serve and have served in our armed forces. You are the torchbearers 
of a proud legacy. We recognize the sacrifices you make every day, the time spent away from loved ones, and the dedication that defines your service. We celebrate your strength, resilience, and commitment to our nation. And I include amongst those my brother Marines, Daniel Bell, infantrymen, and Brad Davis, Force Recon. As we honor the legacy of our fallen heroes, I would like to share why I joined the ranks of the Sea Cadet Corps as their commanding officer of the local Edson unit. My purpose, as most have found, is being part of something bigger than myself and a deep sense of belonging that is only found among those who share in a common moral cause. With the incredible support of my leadership, our instructors, and volunteers, the Sea Cadet program has enabled me to leverage my life experience to make a positive impact. Together, we provide cadets with the opportunities to work as a team, make intelligence-based decisions, adapt to challenges, and build confidence in themselves and each other. This program is more than individual skills. It's about fostering camaraderie resilience, and dedication to service. The United States Naval Sea Cadet Corps is a community of young men and women embracing the values we honor today. Our cadets stand shoulder to shoulder with veterans paying tribute to the sacrifices made for our freedom. They learn honor, courage, and commitment, the values that will serve them well in any path that they choose. The Sea Cadet experience is one of growth and discovery, where young people explore skills from maritime traditions to STEM fields like robotics and cybersecurity. Through this program, cadets develop decision-making skills, collaboration, and practical experience to better prepare them for the success of the 21st century. As we look to the future, we celebrate the potential of our cadets the future leaders who will continue the tradition of service that strengthens our great nation. To the young ones here today, if you seek adventure, growth, and a chance to serve, or if you're a parent looking to invest in your child's future, the Sea Cadets may be the perfect fit for you. We invite you to learn more about this extraordinary program and discover how it can help your child chart a course for a brighter tomorrow. As we leave this place of remembrance and celebration, let us carry with us the spirit of those we honor today. Let their courage, dedication, and vibrant lives inspire us to live life fully, serve our communities with passion, and build a future worthy of their sacrifice. May their legacy forever inspire us to be better citizens and leaders. Thank you. I also want to give out one more dip top certificate, uh, gift certificate to our cover contest winner, Ella Parks from Raysbrook School. At this time, it is my somber duty and honor to recite the names of those veterans who have left us from the town of Orange to the great beyond in 2020, from May 2023 to May 22nd of this year. Robert Alshambaugh. Charles Asarisi, Jr., Stephen Babbitts, Armand Contafio, Michael Clutter, Carlo Costanza, Robert DeMellis, Anthony Dursa, Frank Dostilio, Sr., Edward Dunn, Joseph Gabriel, 
Thomas Griggs, Chester Iannone, Joseph Introcaso, Stanley Itzler, Robert Landucci, George F. Lewis, Carmen Lupoli, George Mako Jr., William Maley, Maynard Marcus, Andrew Mongillo, Michael Moore, David Parks, Richard Pettit, John Pritchard, Sheldon Reinhardt, Vincent Schmidt, Robert Schneider, John Schwartz, Henry Lee Shove, George J. Smith, Henry Summers Jr., John Stenner, Joseph Terziano, Richard Webb, Herman Williams, Paul Wydra Sr., Arthur Zolin Jr., Anthony Zumbo Jr. May their memories be a blessing. At this time, my friend Dominic has a few words to share. The Memorial Day Parade Committee would like to thank Kevin Gilbert for his many years of service to the town of Orange, volunteering to put together the Memorial Day Parade over the last three decades. His dedication to a fun and festive parade while keeping the spirit of honoring those who have served is admirable and much appreciated. Perhaps some marchers were not happy that he never allowed us to throw candy, but it was because he always wanted the children to stay safe and to make sure we enjoy the festivities and not have any problems. Kevin never served in the military, so this was his way of giving back and honoring those who did. The volunteers on this committee begin preparations in the cold months of January for this warm, breezy day here in May. So if you see Kevin around town, thank him for his years of service and this wonderful tradition that our town has come to love, honoring those who have fallen so we could be free. Thank you. At this time, we will have the benediction from Cynthia Romanoff, post 127, Auxiliary of the American Legion. Thank you, Fred. Father in heaven, today we pause to reflect on the sacrifice made by those who paid the ultimate price on behalf of our country. We pray that their sacrifices are never forgotten, nor is the pain carried by their families. We acknowledge that freedom comes at a heavy cost and pray that we will pursue peace. We ask that someday we will celebrate Memorial Day as just a memory of the time before we started living the peaceful existence you intended for us since the beginning of creation. This Memorial Day, we pray for peace and for those who gave all. Lead us toward a world where no one must give their lives in pursuit of freedom. May we be receptive to your guidance, and may we never forget that our freedoms are a gift through sacrifice. Amen. Amen. Thank, Thank you. you. This year's parade marshals are as follows. First Division, Mark Sandillo, U.S. Marine. It's not clear whether he's going to be present today, but he's certainly a reliable and dedicated member of our committee, a U.S. Marine veteran. We hope he is feeling okay now. Uh, the second division, Maggie Lasto will be the parade marshal. I want to also introduce our parade starters, George Jean, Maggie Lasto, Mark Sandillo, John P. Sullivan, John S. Sullivan, Megan K. Crawford, and Ron Wachter. We couldn't do it without you. And of course, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge the person who is our parade chair, 
Kelly Martino. Kel Kelly also is going to be filling in for Mark today as our Grand Marshal for the First Division. So thank you, Kelly. We'd also like to thank the Flag Committee, Mark and Maria Sandillo, and the Sullivan family. At this time, the ceremony is concluded. We ask that you stay for the parade, and uh, we'll see you next year if the fates are kind. Ladies and gentlemen, the parade is now arriving at the reviewing stand led by the color guard of the Orange Police Department, upon whom we all rely for safety and security. Orange Police Chief Robert Gagney and Assistant Chief Max Martins. The OPD ATV Unit. And here come our town officials and dignitaries, Orange First Selectman James Eoli, Senator Richard Blumenthal, Board of Selectmen members Judy Williams, P.J. Shanley, and Mitch Goldblatt, Mary Shaw, Town Clerk, Representative Mary Wielander, and Representative Kathy Kennedy. Town Clerk Mary Shaw, Probate Judge Ben Gettinger, and Art Williams. Chief of Staff, Thomas P. Early. <laughs> and our honored veteran, Gregory Labue.
Superintendent Vince Scarpetti and Principal Tricia Lasso. As well as our School Resource Officer, Detective Carolyn Bailey. And here she comes, the Orange Memorial Day Parade Chairwoman and our first marshal, Kelly Martino! The Orange Elementary School Martin Band. The Girl Scouts organization is 109 years old. We have Daisy Troop 60226, Daisy Troop 60562, 60274, 60582, 60165, 60431, and 600095. Check. Up next, we have the Orange Historical Society. We 
have the Good Child Transitional Center, celebrating each child's uniqueness. And here they come, the Amity Senior High School Marching Band, directed by Mr. Phil Dolan. Country Fair Food Tent, led by the amazing Lynn Plaskowitz and Jody Damon. And here come the men and women of the Orange Volunteer Fire Department, led by Chief Vaughn Dumas. Twenty twenty five is the one hundredth anniversary of the Orange Volunteer Fire Department. And next up, fresh off the tennis courts in the pool. The Pogasek Pool and Tennis Club. Pogasek continues the swimming and tennis traditions for families since 1948 here in town. Highland Park. 
Mike Band, founded by Mc Malcolm A. McDonald in 1968. Pipe major is George Martin. Pipe sergeants are Rich Mount and Gary Snowbeck. Drum sergeant is John Moylehan. And here comes Mr. Fanarella on his tractor. Off to plow some hay. Let's hear it again for Bobby Fan. Hey, Bobby. And here comes the Orange Little League and the Amity Little League Softball. Connecticut Republicans, led by their chairman, Dominic Lombardi. I wonder who that is. Fresh out of the garage, the Crossfire Sports car driven by Mr. Craig Stahl. Our Unit 2 Marshal, Miss Maggie Lasto. Followed by the Amity Middle School Band. Led by Mr. Paisano and Mr. Hoffman.
Next up, the Goodman Performing Arts Center, led by Mrs. Karen Goodman. Values, honesty, integrity, creativity, and fun. Dance can help every aspect of your life by teaching social values and building great relationships. Cub Scout Pack 922, C. Martone and Mr. Cleveland. Thank you for your help with the ceremony and raising and lowering our flag, boys. Coming up next, we have the Orange Democratic Town Committee, led by Chairwoman Jody Deach. Up next, the Nutmeg Volunteer Junior Fife and Drum, an award-winning youth musical organization from Groton, Connecticut. Performing throughout New England and New York, the music of revolutionary, civil, and modern fife and drum eras. The Corps is celebrating their 75th anniversary throughout 2023. Watch the man with the sword, Dr. Messina, fresh off the office chair and ready to go. And fresh from the gardens planting their flowers, the Garden Club of Orange. The purpose of the Garden Club of Orange shall be to promote and encourage gardening skills and knowledge, both individual and civic, and further an understanding of horticulture, floral design, pollinators, and conservation. Up next, the New Haven County Firefighters, Emerald Society, Pipe and Drum Corps. And here they come, fresh from paving the Orange Highway Department. Up next, the Orange Cert, led by Tino Russo, the Community Emergency Response Team. Thank you to our men and women of CERC. Riding in style.
Up next, the 103rd Air Control Squadron <laughs> Air National Guard. The 103rd Airlift Wing is a unit of the Connecticut Air National Guard, stationed at Bradley Air National Guard Base at Bradley International Airport in Windsor, Connecticut. Folks, this concludes the parade. Please join us at the cemetery, led by Commander Lou Merritt of Post 127. On behalf of Mr. O'Brien and myself, we thank you for coming and we'll see you next year. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our ceremony here at the Orange Cemetery. For Memorial Day is an important day for me because it brings to memory the people that I grew up with, the people who served in World War II in Korea. They were my mentors as I grew up. In my high schools, when I worked, I was beside the men and the women who served in our armed forces during World War II. And they gave me very much inspiration in my life and made me thankful for the country that I served when it was my turn. Service in the United States, in the military, and in our emergency services are the backbone of our government because without them, we do not have the peace and prosperity that they have given for us. So it is important today that we th solemnly remember those people who are no longer with us, for they have brought along with us their soul, their love for the United States of America, for their families, for our communities. For all that, we are truly thankful for these blessings of the United States granted us by God are important to our everyday life. And with that, I call upon our temporary chaplain, Peter McDonald, to offer us a prayer. Well, thank you all for coming out on this wonderful day. A uh, little Memorial Day prayer. Oh Lord, we give, you, uh, we give you thanks for the American way of life that we enjoy today. Let us not forget that the rights and privileges we enjoy... Get out of the way. <laughs> ...have blood on them, and that every good day, gift was brought, bought and paid for and human sacrifice. Today we honor all those who have gone before us and made the supreme sacrifice. We are ever grateful for those who are now serving our countries in every part of the world, this world as they are <clears throat> your instruments of peace and freedom. We pray for the families whose loved ones have given their last full measure of devotion. Their very lives for people who now have the freedom in their homeland democracy. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. you take your position. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Peter. Yeah. In solemn memory of those people who served in our armed forces and in our government today, who are no longer with us, we are grateful. And in appreciation, we're going to place the wreath of remembrance on our tomb, representing all soldiers and sailors, airmen who served our country in our current wars, our past wars, and even in our revolutions that brought forth this nation. I'm going to call upon the American Legion Auxiliary now to place the wreath in the memory of the U.S and allied soldiers that have protected our nation. Thank you. I now upon, call upon the representative 
of the Jewish war veterans to place the wreath, honoring those who served our nation. In the Great War, which we call now call World War I, a poem was written by Lieutenant John McCrae of the Canadian Mil Royal Hospital Corps in memory of the poppies that he saw in the graveyards, which now has become a symbol of veteran service. In Flanders fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place, and in the sky, the lark shall bravely sling, fly scarce, heard amongst the gun below. We are the dead, short days ago, we lived, fell down, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, now we lie in Flanders Field. Take up our quarrel with a foe, to you, Frail hands we throw, the torch of liberty. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Now, please rise, and with me, we salute the dead. Thank you for coming today. This concludes our ceremony here at the ceremony for, for Orange. Let us not forget the people all over the United States today, or this weekend, are also remembering the people who made this day possible for us. And with that, we give thanks to Almighty God for the bounty that the United States has given to us. May God continue to bless the United States and all of us with its glory. Amen.